everybody. This is Movies and Yoga with Via and Kathy is my student model. Uh, today is, let me find the date, March 15th, 2022, unless you're watching this on replay, when it's any date that you're watching it. Let's get started in the ordinary fashion, just with what's called static rest. Seven minutes we're going to be here. This is a great pose for releasing the lower back and the psoas. And what I'd like you to do is just pay attention to breath. If you start to wander, your mind starts to wander, just bring it back without judging. You could benefit from more, we're gonna be here for seven minutes. You could benefit from staying here for an hour um, or even more probably, but definitely for an hour.
Oops, I was muted. Stay there. Don't go anywhere. Your time is up. But I want you to stay here and just move your head slowly from side to side. You can keep your feet up on a couch or a chair or a box. And then bring your head back to center, vagus nerve reset. Your head can be resting on a pillow or something else, maybe a sponge ball, without moving anything but your eyeballs. Your eyes can be open or closed. Shift your eyeballs to the right. And we. for a sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. Come on back, shift your eyeballs to the left. Wait for a sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. And then come back to center and do this two more times, right, left, right, left, without my cueing. When you're finished, set up for vagus nerve reset. You'll want to put something under your head. You mean head ramping? I'm sorry, set up for head ramping. The brain <laughs> last, lapsed. Um, set up for head ramping. Thank you for the correction. This is uh, to counteract everything you do when you're looking at your computer or your phone, when you're looking down, doing a hobby, any hobby, knitting. Um, okay, so from here, lying on your back, pressing your head or the occipital ridge, the base of your skull into the floor, towards the floor. Or holding, it stretches the back of your neck nicely. You should feel that. Holding, pausing, and then releasing. And do the same thing over again. So this is a vagus. No, this is not a vagus. This is a head ramping, head ramping. Some people call it chin tuck. I don't like that name. I'll tell you why in a minute. Keep counting, do about five more of these. Because uh, you're not really tucking your chin, you're pressing the occipital ridge down. And that in turn uh, allows the chin to tuck. If you just focused on a chin tuck, you might not do the occipital ridge move, which is actually critical to the neck, to realigning the cervical spine. If 
You can do the seated or standing too. But I like it best supine. If you stay in my class long enough, your head, your neck will, will long for this movement. Finish that. We're going to come off of the uh, chair or box or sofa, whatever you put your knees on. Bring your knees, your feet down, push the chair away or push yourself away from the chair. We're going to start do a hypopressive. We're going to do a bridge hypopressive. So in this position, your Knees are bent, your heels are on the floor, your toes are up toward the ceiling, dorsiflexion at the ankle. Bring your, um, what you're gonna do is, we're gonna do three breaths, three ordinary breaths, and then hold your breath out, no breath. When you start holding your breath out, you'll lift your hips like Kathy's doing and bring your arms overhead. And then I will count to 15, and you will stay up with your breath out, for as long as you can, maybe 15. And then inhale, drop the hips, and exhale, drop the hands. Okay, let's go. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, full inhale. And exhale, all the way out. Hold your breath out, no breath. Lift your hips, arms overhead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, inhale, the hips come down. Exhale, the arms come down. Let's do one more of those. Three breaths, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. Exhale, all the way out. Hold your breath out, no breath. Lift your hips and arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, no breath. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Inhale, hips come down and exhale, the arms come down. The nice thing about combining bridge with hyperpressive breath is that you're getting all, of the, all the benefits of a bridge uh, in addition to all the benefits of a hyperpressive. Let's stay supine here, you know, feet on the floor. We're gonna do the six directions of movement of the pelvis. If you have any uh, hip or back issues, this may help to release uh, release the pelvis uh, into its um, natural resting state. So you're, you're, here you are, the first set, the first pair, there are three of these, there are three pairs. The first is, is tilting back and forth. You can put your hand on the ASIS, which is the highest point on your hips in the front, if you want to, to feel this. And you can imagine that your tailbone is dropping between your legs to the floor, and then coming back, the other tilt is dropping um, into your belly button, like you're spilling water, your belly button. So take those two points, tilt the pelvis, the tailbone down, and then tilt it up. 
Nice. And keep going. This is one, the first pair. Two more. The last one. And then try to come to neutral, somewhere in between those two points. And the next thing we're going to do is hip hikes. You can put your thumb at the top of the side of your pelvis. Um, the thumb, put the thumb there, Kathy, so people can see it's, hmm. Okay, and press there just to feel that this is going to go up and down. So you're going to, uh, you're going to hike the hip, the right hip, right pelvis towards the armpit. And then the, obviously the other side goes down and then come down and hike up the left side of the pelvis or the hip comes up towards the armpit. And then keep doing this four or five times. Try not to um, do anything else, but, the, but this side, side bend, really, it's a side, side bend or hike of the pelvis. And when you're finished, come back to a center, central balanced position where the hips, the pelvis feels even. The last one we're going to do, the last pair is um, actually a, a, a rotation. So you can put your hand back on the ASIS and push, push the right pelvis to the floor and then push the left pelvis to the floor, side of the pelvis. Remembering the pelvis is, is two, two different pieces on either side of the sacrum. And you're just gonna drop it. The trick is not to hike, hike your hip. Don't do the, the last position, just, just drop, come back to center and then drop the other side of the pelvis towards the floor. These are the six directions of movement of the pelvis. Um, often we don't move our pelvis well, or we, we move one side better than the other. This is gonna help even that out and release some of the tension um, we hold in, in the hips, in the pelvis. When you're finished, I want you to just rest a minute. You can bring your knees together and your feet wide and rest and maybe see how that feels to have loosened up the, the pelvis with the six directions of motion of the pelvis. And then come back. Let's see, I want you to take your, your knees wide and then drop your right knee into the center. Drop it, not to, yeah, uh, and then put your left ankle on the right knee. We're going to do a um, a kihara resistance stretch with this. First, this pro hopefully this just feels good, releasing the quads. And now, using the weight of your foot, left foot, as as, as a resistance, move your right knee out and up while the foot, left foot is resisting the movement. Or did you get a cramp? Yeah, right there. <laughs> okay, work it out, work it out. So you're gonna do this very slowly and what you, could, you should feel the resistance that the left foot has given, provided you. And then when you come down, the, the, the foot wins, the left foot wins, and the right knee resists the downward movement. Of, this is called Kihara resistance. It, it has you both stretching and strengthening at the, in the same exercise. So when you're down, you're stretching. When you're coming down and when you're coming up, you're strengthening. Do it with awareness and resistance. Always moving, always resisting.
This stretches the quad. The, our quads are often tight uh, and keep us from moving well in our hips. And switch sides of the knee. Drop the left knee into the middle. Put the right foot on top of it and create a resistance motion here. You can pause at the bottom and feel that nice stretch along the quad. And go ahead and finish up and lie on your back and put a brick underneath your hip. Let's see how, how you No, I'd like you to either put a set of therapy balls horizontally across your sacrum or actually down as low as you can get it. If you don't have a set of therapy balls, you could put, so put a brick. We're going to release a little muscle called the in, um, internus ob obturator. Come bring your legs uh, and knee, knees up into um, a tabletop like Kathy is, and then just open up and close. So the trick is to have your ball or your bricks low enough so that you're really um, reaching this muscle as opposed to some other muscle. Um, as low as you can get it and still keep it there, or as low as the brick is, and then just open and close about five or six times. If your legs are shaking, if <laughs> it's because this area doesn't automatically get stretched or addressed in any fashion. So this is maybe new to your body or almost new, or at least new since the last time we were here, last time we did it. And whenever you're ready, um, bring your feet down and lift your hips and take the ball away, the balls away. And have a one therapy ball, large or small. We're gonna do glute releases with the with a the therapy ball. So you're gonna start by putting your ball smack dab in the middle of your right glute. There's a couple things you can do, and I, this is sort of spontaneous, a, a, way, a spontaneous move. Um, one of the things you can do is just roll, try to roll around on your ball in a circle, one direction and then another. You can get one and try, try to get do this too. Okay, another thing you can do is just um, stop moving and just drop your right knee out to the right and then lift it up and drop it back.
So back and forth you go. And then come back to center and see if you can, maybe you're gonna to have to be up on your elbow. See if you can move up and down over the ball. A small up and down movement. You did the side to side by moving the knee, but this time you're gonna just move your body up and down over the ball. Uh, like that. <laughs> And you know, you can imagine there's lots of things you could do while you're doing this. And I recommend doing this, especially if you have tight tightness in your glutes. Um, so you could actually lift your leg up, for instance, and then hug it, hug your knee, hug your knee. That's another way. So it's, it's almost unlimited because of your imagination. Um, the last thing I'd like to show you, though, is to roll uh, all the way over so that the ball is a little farther out on the edge. This might actually come as a shock to you on this field because there's a, an area that a lot of people is at the top of your um, T band um, that people feel a lot of tension here. Um, and so you're going to roll over the ball so that the ball is now towards the outer edge of the um, uh, glutes and find that and just rest there if, if, if you can rest or stay there. Or you can move a little bit over that, that area back and forth. And come on back. It's too bad to leave that spot, really. <laughs> come on back. Take the ball away for a minute and just rest and see if you notice a difference between the two sides of the glute. You might. And then whenever you're ready, go to the other side. Now let's see if I can remember all the things we did. So first thing we did was just Right. Oh, I know what the first thing after resting, compressing, just feeling it, then you made a little circle um, around the wall and if you feel a lot of pain, you may have identified an area that needs releasing. If the pain doesn't go away as you're moving over the ball, you need to stop. And um, it's, you know, there's an injury there that you, that you may not, you wanna listen to your body. Stop if, if it's too painful. Otherwise, just know that there is a little pain in this therapy ball work. Okay, a circle. Now, uh, what did we do next? Um, Knee out, knee out to the side. I'm going to stretch my leg out so you can see that. Okay. And I think this would, that would be okay if everybody wanted to stretch their leg out. You know, what the other leg is doing doesn't really matter so much. Knee to the side, return, and do it a couple more times. And then try to move up back and forth. My, you might want to put, bring yourself up onto your elbows and up, use your legs and your elbows to do this, but you want to move up and down over the mat, over the balls, up and down the mat over the balls, the ball. If this is too extreme for you and you have a sponge ball, you could use a sponge ball. Okay. 
last Irene. Yeah, this is a this this particular movement is very meaningful for my glutes. <laughs> And then the last one I think I did. No, I did. Uh, what did I do, Kathy? Let's see. All the way to the all end. the way over. So you you roll your roll over towards the outside on that ball. Now I'm finding this extremely sensitive. So oh, yeah. I have some I have some um, some tension here in this hip. And just be, be there, you can just stay there or you can roll on and off of that position. And then come back. And remember, I said, told you you could hug your knee. So hug your knee with your ball back in the center. And then whenever you're ready, just bring, to leave, take your ball away and lie there and see how it feels. You may even want to do windshield wipers side to side. Just slowly. Good work. Let's come up to a seated position. and cross your legs. We're going to do hip circles with a flat back. Cross your legs, uh, sit up tall, keep your back flat and then go out to the right. So take your chin and your spine, but with a flat back over your knee. And when you come over, come as far as you can go, then just take your body across to the other knee. Look down, look down so that you have a straight uh, a cervical spine. And then when you come up, come up with a flat back. Let's do that in the other direction. So remember, for straight spine, fold over towards the left knee. And then looking down so you're cervical spine is straight. Bring your head and your spine all the way across. It's a circle, kind of. And then come up on the right side. Let's do that two more times, two more sets. So go down to the right. And look down so you're not uh, overextending your neck. Come across and come up. And down to the left. And come across. And come up. One more set. Look, come down to the right. Flat back. Drop your head a little bit. Come across and come up. And one more time on the left, left, come down to the left knee, flat back. 
bring your head across to the right knee and then come back up. Let's do side bend. Side bend, I'm gonna have time for this. 40 seconds, hold on. Take your right arm along the floor. Take your left arm up and over your head or by your ear. Side bending the torso or the thoracic spine is forming a C shape. Halfway through, we're gonna take the elbow, top elbow forward right now. Top elbow forward, you should feel a stretch in your armpit. Another stretch, latissimus dorsi. Come on up. Elbow first, torso next. Go to the other side. I'm going to turn the volume down on the ring. See if that helps. And my arm around. Who's Kelly? Left arm sliding along the floor, right arm up and over. And just stay here and breathe. Remember, you're kind of a, a C shape now. And then bring your elbow forward. Your top elbow. And bring your elbow up and then bring your torso up. We're gonna do now do a spine twist. Uh, starting on the right, left hand, on, you can cross, recross your legs as well. Your left hand goes to your right knee, your right hand, arm goes around behind you, spider fingers. Make a, a spinal twist here, a spinal rotation as far as you can go comfortably. Sit tall and 40 seconds. You have a choice. You can move your head, cervical uh, rotation, side to side, or you can move your rib cage side to side, or you can do a little bit of each, but not at the same time. Yeah. Slowly unravel to the other side. Right hand on the left knee, sit tall. Left hand behind you, spider fingers on the floor. Rotate your spine, thoracic spine twist. Remember you can also, although it's optional, an add on, you can add on either or both of these things. Just moving your, cervical spine, moving your head from side to side, or you can move your rib cage from side to side. Okay, let's see what's next here. Let's do the, we're gonna do the figure four progressions with a brick. So you're gonna have, need to have two bricks actually, um, if you can. Yes, we're gonna start with a basic figure four. This, these are all hip openers. Start with a basic figure four and then 
uh, keep adding. And this is a nice progression um, to ease into some fairly uh, extreme hip, uh, hip stretches. Lying on your back, the first, the basic stretch, which we're gonna do for 40 seconds, is to have your left ankle on top of your, your right ankle on top of your left knee. You want to put your head on a couple towels or a pillow. That was the basic figure four hip stretch. Now you're going to put your left foot on a brick and then go into the same position, the same shape. 40 seconds. Okay, the next step is two bricks. So you're gonna put your left foot on two bricks and take the same shape. If you want to, you can push your right knee back using your, your hand. If you want to, you can lift your toes. Next one, throw away the bricks. And hug your left thigh behind your thigh towards you, using both hands. Pull your, your left thigh be, towards you. Your left thigh and your left knee towards you. And the next and last progression is to hug your le left knee towards you, holding on to the back of the knee, shin. So you're a little closer, maybe. And I'm gonna put the timer on. So hugging the left knee by putting your both hands, interlacing your fingers and putting your hand, your hand wrapping around the shin and pulling in.
Other side. Have your bricks nearby. We're going to do the basic figure four. Right, uh, right foot is on the floor. Left ankle comes in front of the left right knee. You stay here. You may want to, you could push on your left knee, push it out. You could lift your toes. I'm timing these for 40 seconds, just FYI, if you want to do this at home. In your home practice. Okay, that was the basic. Now you're going to put your right foot on one brick. And take the same shape. Remember, you can flex your feet. You can push your left knee away with your left hand. Okay, that was the second progression. The third progression is two bricks. Put your right foot on two bricks. Bring your left ankle in front of your right knee. And you can push. You can push the left knee away. You can dorsiflex your one or both feet, ankles. Okay, now get, get rid of the bricks. The next position is still a figure four, but you're gonna hug your right thigh by putting your both hands behind your, your thigh. And pull, 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 it, pull your knee towards your face, your right knee towards your face. Remember, you can dorsiflex your feet. Last one, this time hug your right knee, um, putting your hands on your shin and pulling in.
stay here on a supine and just move your what do windshield wipers side to side. And get yourself ready for yoga nidra. Um, 61 point guided meditation. If you'd like to, well, for yoga nidra, you may want to put a towel over your eyes. You may want to put a blanket over you. You want to be Feel safe, warm, and comfortable. And now let's start by focusing on your breath, beginning to breathe in and out and observe your belly as it rises and falls with the gentle flow of your breath. And now bring your awareness and your attention to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, Second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes the 61 point guided yoga nidra meditation. Go ahead and extend your legs and bring your arms overhead and wiggle and stretch and try to create a little more space between your pelvis and your rib cage. Stretch and stretch, right side, left side. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Circle your ankles and your wrists in one direction and then in the other. Hug your right knee to your chest. Releasing your lower back. And then hug your left knee. Releasing your lower back. And then hug both knees to your chest. Rock from side to side. This is a great way to release your lower back. And massage your organs. And then whenever you're ready, roll onto your side and stay here long enough to thank yourself for coming. Thank yourselves and yourself for coming to your practice today, your yoga practice. And then whenever you're ready, use your top hand to bring yourself up into a floor seated position for the closing. And I'm going to remove the spotlight and put myself on gallery view so I can see all of you. I can't put you on gallery view, but you could put you on gallery view. Bring your hands to your heart. 
press your palms together really hard. And so you can feel some work, feel your scapula in the upper back. Sit tall. Release your prayer pose to, to a soft prayer pose and lift, lift your, your, your skull away from the shoulders, the occipital ridge, so that you can nod forward, just the skull, not the, not the spine. Skull nods forward, bowing, nodding, honoring the light in each of us and in yourself, and then recognizing that we're all one light. Let's stay here an extra uh, 30 seconds to pray for peace in Ukraine. And then we'll close by saying to each other, namaste. Namaste. Hey. Namaste. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Thank you. Ask. Irene, are you behind the Galaxy A12? <laughs> Maybe she won't. I'm sorry, I have to run. All right, run. Have a good day. Well, I can hear good luck, Harvin. Good hear luck, Harvin. Yeah, I have an appointment. Okay. I can hear. Okay, so Irene, you you are the person behind the Galaxy. You came back with the, your Galaxy A12. Oh, we lost. Yeah, my my uh, iPad battery died. Oh, okay, good. Well, I hope I hope it was a good experience for I don't you. Know. What? Oh, I, don't, I think you're muted. Hold on. Well, I don't know. So, uh, can you hear me now? I yeah, can't. Now, can. now I can, but I couldn't before. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It was a good class, Mia. Thank you. Very good. Bye. See you all later.